Hey everyone, Adam here and I'm very excited because just a few moments ago I've exported the final version of my first song and so if everything goes well it should be released on the 20th of September so basically in two weeks. I've been trying to mix it and master it myself. Uh, it took me quite a lot of time because I've never did it before but I believe that I reached a result that's uh, like decent or it's good enough. Here's a little teaser for the song. It was quite a lot of things to, to learn, but yeah, I wanted to tell you about some of those things that I, that I learned. So the first thing is that next time when I'm recording the guitars, both electric guitars and the bass, I need to pay more attention to the recording because when I started mixing it, when I went into the solo mode for the individual tracks, I would often see some issues or some things that were causing problems. Yeah, it could have been recorded better, as simple as that. But, uh, you know, I was excited when I was recording it and it, when you hear the full mix, it, it sounds great. So you move on to the next step or the next layer, next guitar or whatever. And yeah, the recordings, they, they mo in most cases it was good, but in some cases uh, it, really, it really wasn't. And especially with the bass, bass was causing the most problems. And in general, that's the, that's the theme of, of the mixing. I've been struggling with the low end so much. But also I couldn't make a new recording because initially, before I started recording everything, I took my guitars to the shop, they changed the strings to the fresh ones, and they did a good professional setup. Then I recorded everything, and then I went away for almost two weeks. And so when I started working on, on mixing, and I realized that, okay, this part, maybe I should record it again. and. Especially with the bass, when I tried to record it, the strings, they are not fresh anymore and it, it sounds different. So to match the sound that I got before, it was really, it wasn't easy. And I realized that th there's no point to, to, to fight it, to try to mix both of these. With the bass, even though I recorded all the parts, I decided to just scratch it and use the plugin instead. Uh, it was quite easy for that song to program everything in the MIDI, so it was quite fast. But even though I now have a good MIDI bass recording, let's, let's say, and it sounds good, there are still some areas that were causing the problems. That's when I realized that the low end is really hard. It's really tricky to, to get it under control and I guess everyone has a problem with it. It's, it's not just me, it's not just the way I recorded the things, but simply put the bass is hard or the low end is hard. Uh, for example, the resonant frequencies, that's something that I learned. But when you play certain frets and the string resonates, for certain frequencies it will it will resonate so much that it will be very boomy and it's, it's uh, not easy to get it under control. And initially, when I was mixing it, I, I thought that maybe I can fix it with the compression and limiter, but that even made the things worse. Later, I, I learned that uh, you can fix it with the EQ. Uh, I'm gonna show you later in the logic, uh, how I do it. But yeah, uh, low end is hard. Also when it comes to mix or when it comes to working with the low end, 
I realized that these uh, studio monitors that I have, Yamaha HS5, they don't really uh, handle the bass that well, or, or I can, can't hear the bass coming out of them that good. So instead I was, in some cases, I was using the, these headphones. It's Audio-Technica ATH MT50X, so standard ones and not expensive. But it definitely helped me. I had a much better picture of what's happening. So that was really helpful. And also what, what helped me or, or what was nice is that I have Universal Audio Apollo Twin audio interface. And basically whenever I play something, the sound comes from both the studio monitors as well as the headphones. And so when I put the headphones on, I still can hear the studio monitors, right? But I don't have to turn on or turn off the knobs or anything like that. There is a mute button. And so with one tap, uh, it mutes the studio monitors, but I can still hear it in the uh, headphones. So that was really, really nice. And it was very fast to switch in between. And last but not least, there's something that I realized with the pedals. So. I have quite a lot of pedals, some of them were expensive. For example, the Strymon Big Sky as a reverb and Timeline as a delay. They are awesome, I love them and they definitely inspire me. When I play something, I experiment and it, it helps me to come up with ideas for a new song or a melody or whatever. When you record guitars, you don't really use them. Uh, you record dry guitars, so without effects, and then you, you have two choices. So I can reamp the guitars or re-effect with the pedals, but that's quite complicated because I need to use the reamp box out of the interface, into the reamp box, into the pedals, and then into the DI box and back into the interface. So that's quite complicated. And then you, you set it somehow, you, you record it, and then you have a recording and you cannot adjust it anymore. Or there is a second option, which I chose in most of the cases where I used plugins. So with plugins, it's, it's really just a few clicks. Uh, you can even go through some presets and just change and, and see how it goes during the mixing. And then at any point, you can change your mind, change the settings, and that's it, it's really simple. With pedals, I would have to always re-record it again. I kind of realized that it's strange that, because I don't play live, uh, but I have these really nice pedals, I won't really use them on the recording, because I'm using the plugins. So, yeah, for me, the pedals, it's, it's mainly for the experimenting, inspiration and having fun when playing something just for fun but yeah i won't be using them on the actual recording that much so that was kind of a new revelation to me and it was uh, i thought it it's interesting so anyway let me switch to logic so that i can show you how do i fix the resonant frequencies on the bass guitar even with with the midi so that's my project in the Logic and I'm going to show you how I'm fixing the problematic bass parts. So I have uh, three sections for the bass or three parts. It's slow, heavy and fast. Fast bass wasn't causing any problems because the notes are so fast that they don't have time to resonate. But with the slow and heavy bass, that's a different story. And actually, the, the biggest problems we, the biggest problems were in the heavy bass, uh, and that's because there is long note. There, there, there are few short notes, and then the long note, and the long note was resonating too much. So let me put a headphone so that I can hear it better. I'm gonna disable the plugins uh, that are fixing it. So 
So yeah, I'm not sure how audible is it in the video, but when I have the headphones on, it's definitely, it puts a, a lot of strain on my ear or it's very tiring, like it's, it's not nice. And uh, on some good speakers uh, or even with the subwoofer, it just would be very boomy. It wouldn't be nice. So we need to fix it. Initially, I tried to fix it with automation. So the parts where it was resonating too much, I, I would try to lower the volume. And on the contrary, some parts, they were, were not resonating enough and it was very quiet and I would try to make it louder. But that was a really bad idea. It, it caused more problems than it solved. Then I also tried to use compression and limiters, but it didn't help. Resonating frequencies needs to be fixed in the EQ and each frequency has to be fixed individually. So I'm using this ProQ free EQ plugin from the Fab filter. And basically I had two problematic frequencies. The first one is here for this part. And the second one is here for this note. I'm going to enable the plugins, which will fix the problem, but we will see the spectrum as well. So you, you can actually even see it on the spectrum. So as you can see, when the note is in the sustain, other frequencies, they are dipping down, but that resonating frequency, it's not going down. It's, it's either pulsating or it's even growing in some cases. So let me play it back. As you can see, it's, it's growing and it's resonating and it's, it's not, not nice, it's causing problems. But the moment that that note stops playing, it's, it's no longer ca causing the, the problems because it's specific to, to that fret, to that note that I'm playing. Basically, you can check the spectrum and see if you, if you see it on, on the frequency spectrum. And if you don't see it, then you make the dip and you try to find it by listening. So again, here on that long note, it, it was causing problems, but then w when it goes to different part, it kind of dips and it's not resonating anymore. Yeah, that's, that's basically it. So check the spectrum and see if you can find it. And if not, then just listen for it. So in the end, it was quite easy to, to fix the problem, but it was causing me a lot of headaches. I was struggling to, to resolve this for a few days. And as I mentioned, I tried to fix it with automation, which was bad idea. Compression and the limiter didn't help either, but this solved it immediately. So actually I was even able to delete or disable all the automation for the bass because I don't need it. Simply because I divided the bass into three parts. Each has a different volume. Here in the 
mixing and and yeah I, I didn't need automation for the bass so that was also quite nice anyway i i hope it's helpful and i, I hope that i explained it well that's it for today i hope you find it interesting please stay tuned for the release of my first song uh, i'll keep you posted like and subscribe so that you don't miss it thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one